Hello and welcome to my next video on cloning. So what is a clone? A clone is an organism that is genetically identical to another organism. And we have two main types of cloning. We have reproductive cloning, which is where you use reproduction to get a whole organism, and non-reproductive cloning, where you use cells. Now, before we start talking about artificial cloning, we're going to talk about natural cloning, which is asexual reproduction. Now, you have just, you know, mitosis in cells, like R cells, and you have binary fission in prokaryotes. Now, this basically replicates the DNA so you get two identical copies of that cell. Now, what are the ad advantages and disadvantages to asexual reproduction? Well, the advantages are it is quick, so allowing an organism to reproduce rapidly and so take, it, take advantage of resources in the environment. If there is a sudden surge of resources and you can really quickly asexually reproduce, you can collect all those resources. Equally, if you're having a problem, you can very quickly asexually reproduce to perhaps move the plants away from the direct problematic area. Let's say there is where a tree is, there's a you know, not much nutrients in the soil, but, you know, 10 metres away there is, if you can artificially replicate and move over to that area, you've then, you're going to survive, and that organism and that species will survive. It can also be completed if sexual reproduction fails or is not possible, so it's a backup plan. So if there are no other plants, cause we're not talking about animals here, animals don't really asexually reproduce, but mainly plants. If there is no other plants, if there perhaps the bees have died in there and not, you know, pollinating, you can still reproduce, get more generations and wait until, you know, there is a chance to pollinate. All offspring have the same genetic material to survive. If one tree is surviving or one organism is surviving in that area and asexually reproduces, so another identical organism is in that area, then it has the same material to survive, so it will survive as well. And disadvantage, you'll hear this about every disadvantage with cloning ever, lack of genetic variation. They have the exact same genetic code, which means if you have a, let's say it happens a lot of actual reproduction, you could have a whole forest just of the same genetic tree. Now, what the problem with that is if there's a disease, there's no, you know, resistance to it. All the trees have the same fault. You know, if there's, there can't be evolution because there are no, no differences in the genetic code, which means some have a weakness, some have a strength. There isn't that. All of them have the same strengths and the same weaknesses. So we're going to firstly look at animal cloning, mainly because it's more interesting. There are two types. There's splitting embryos, which is also known as artificial identical twins, and there's nuclear transfer using enucleated eggs. We're going to firstly look at splitting embryos using the I've used the examples in the book here on page 156, so we're going to use a cow and a bull. And now this could be used because you want certain qualities in your organism. Now this is quite simple. You have a cow, a female cow and a male cow, which is a bull. The cow produces eggs, also known as ovum. And a bull produces sperm, also known as spermatozoa. And they are fertilised in vitro. -ly. Um, so they are done outside the body. And then, like normal reproduction, sperm enters the egg and the cells will divide. And it divides by doubling. So you have one cell becomes two, becomes four, becomes eight, becomes 16. Once you've got 16, you then split that cell. Now, you wouldn't have a perfect square, but I've drawn it for easy, making it easy to draw 16. You can split it into four parts of four cells, implant them into a sur surrogate mother so they can, you know, grow up. And then you've got four calves. Each is a clone of each other. Now, they're not a clone of the original cow or the original bull because, well, as you can see, you've got half, you've got the same way as just normal fertilization. You've got a mother and a father. But all the clones are identical to each other. That's why they're also known as artificial identical twins. So, I mean, this is a way that normal identical twins are made. You know, you fertilise inside the body and then the original kind of ball of cells will split into two. So you'll get two identical twins because they have the same genetic information. Animal cloning, nuclear transfer. Now, this is the more famous one because this is what made Dolly the sheep. 
but it's also the more complicated one. So yet again, I've used the example in the book and the example of Dolly the sheep happens to be, but you can have them with any animal. So you have a Finn Dorset ewe, the mother, and well, they're actually both technically mothers, um, and a Scottish blackface female. Now the Finn Dorset gives mammary cells from the udder. Now these have the nucleus, so they have the genetic material. The Scottish blackface ewe gives an egg, the nucleus is removed, meaning you've got an enucleated ovum. And what happens is these two cells are fused together using electrofusion. Now what this means is that you have the cytoplasm of the Scottish blackface ewe and you have the nucleus of the Finn Dorset. Now you put this culture into a tied overduct of a sh of another sheep to culture. And you start getting cell division, you get an early embryo, you then remove the early embryo and put it back into a surrogate mother ewe. And this is a Scottish blackface. You use Scottish blackface as the kind of surrogate. And then what will happen is you'll get identical clone of the animal from with the nucleus. So the fin dorsal ewe will be, will be an exact genetic copy. So advantages and disadvantages. Advantages, you can produce high value animals. So cows with high milk yield can be cloned in large numbers. So you get lots of cows with high milk yield or high value male to produce lots of, you know, meat. You can clone rare animals to preserve the species. Let's say, you know, you've only got 10 animals left. You can clone it so you can get, you know, perhaps 100 animals. So you've got a lot more. The problem with that is, as we'll see, it's genetic diversity. If you have a very low population to start reproducing, you've reduced the gene pool, so you're going to get mutations. Genetically modified animals, so for example, sheep that produce pharmaceutical chemicals in their milk can be quickly reproduced. So if you have, if you genetically modified one animal to have a desired trait, you can reproduce that one animal, clone it to get the same trait in a lot of animals. Now, disadvantages. Animal welfare is never generally thought about when you do cloning. So... It says here that some strains of meat-producing chickens have been developed that are unable to walk. That's not very nice to the animal at all. Now, lack of genetic diversity again, you know, any change in the environment could cause a problem. And then unknown health issues. Now, for example, Dolly the sheep was put down at age six, suffering from a form of lung cancer caused by a virus. Now, it was nothing unusual with the animal of her age and weight at the time. But what we're saying is basically we don't know the full health risks. Could all cloned animals actually live to a ripe old age or are they all going to get health problems earlier? So it, now while he says in the book, you know, it's wrongly reported as being due to premature aging caused by cloning, definitely wasn't premature aging, but it could be that that animal had, you know, some problem in its genetic code caused by cloning, which meant when it you know it could develop lung cancer a lot easier or a lot younger you know it could have a genetic problem non-reproductive cloning now this is just using cells you can clone cells to you and use them to generate new cells tissues and organs why because if you take cells out of a very early embryo you have stem cells and these stem cells as i've said later on are totally potent meaning they can differentiate into any type of cell so, as a baby, you could remove stem cells from, you know, well, not the baby, as, in, as you know, before the baby's even been born, remove its stem cells, keep them somewhere. Now, let's say when that child grows up, it has a kidney failure and both its kidneys die. Well, here's, here's where you got all the advantages. Now, you can create a kidney or two kidneys from its own stem cells. Now, that means when you put it back in, it's not going to be rejected because it's got the same genetic code as the original baby or rather the original organism, so it will see it as it is itself, because it is itself, so it'll be fine. You won't have to wait for donors. You won't have to be sitting around going on dialysis, waiting for the donors. You can just go, look, I need new kidneys. Here are my stem cells. Can you make them? And then they are made. You know, It might take a while to make them, but it's a lot quicker than having to wait perhaps months for a donor. So it's low, totally potent. Any, you can get any sort of organ or tissue from it. And it's less dangerous than an operation. For example, um, if you had to do a heart transplant and use cloned cells, perhaps just to replace the tissue that's damaged, that's a lot safer. So you can regenerate heart muscle following a heart attack, 
repair nervous tissue, um, repair the spinal cord of paralyzed people. There's loads of things we can do. Now, the only problem is so-called ethical reasons. You know, should we be doing this on humans? Um, we un we don't understand how clone cells behave. Um, you know, just general ethical concerns, which are always are of anything to do with humans. Now, plants. Vegetative propagation. Now, vegetative propagation refers to the production of structures in an organism that can grow into new individual organisms. These offspring contain the same genetic information as the parent and so are clones of the parent. Now, this is natural cloning as well. This is essentially like, almost like asexual reproduction. Well, I think it actually might be. And what will happen is that different plants propagate differently. And it says in the stretch and challenge bit, here are the different versions. You don't need to know them, but it's always good. You have root suckers, also known as basal sprouts or basal shoots. And this is an example of the English elm tree, which we'll look at. So they form from meristem tissue close to the ground. They kind of appear like bits of the root coming off. You have tubers, specialised underground stems, which become swollen with nutrient molecules. And tubers, you have potatoes. Condensed shoots of very short stems and fleshy leaf bases called bulbs form. These contain nutrients, but at the side develops into new bulbs. So that's the onions, the daffodils, and runners. Specialized stems grow along the ground from the parent plant. At the tips, they form roots and shoots. So strawberries. If you ever seen a strawberry plant, it's kind of it's like vines. It just grows out on the ground. So we had to give the example of the English elm, and I've drawn some pictures here. You have a healthy English elm tree with a root sucker. Then the tree contracts Dutch elm disease, which I'll talk about in a bit. And you have more root suckers. The elm tree dies and the root suckers start to live. So the, the, they are healthy. The root suckers are fine. But as the root suckers start to grow, the largest one then contracts root, um, Dutch elm disease. I'm going to explain what this is now. Dutch elm disease spread throughout Europe's elms. The leaves withered, followed by death of branches and trunks. Now, this is caused by a fungal disease carried by a beetle. Now, the English elm responds to the destruction of the main trunks. The trunk is destroyed. The roots are not. So the, you can get root suckers growing. Now, the problem is, when the plant gets to about 5 centimetres in diameter, it will get this disease again, because generally the beetle is on that big English elm. It could easily go to one of the root suckers. And... Why it is a problem is that these root suckers are a clone. Now, if the original English elm died and you know contracted Dutch elm disease and couldn't fight it off, well, then the cloned plants of the English elm will have the exact same genetic fault, so can easily contract Dutch elm disease. So they have no resistance. That's the problem with genetic, or rather, the lack of genetic variation. Artificial vegetative propagation. Now there are three main types, taking cuttings, grafting and tissue culture that you need to know about. Two not in so much detail, so I'll go over them briefly. Cuttings, now everyone, everyone knows about cuttings, you just cut a bit of a plant and it can grow. Can't work with all plants, but can work with some. And you cut it between leaf nodes and then it's often can be treated with plant hormones to encourage root growth. Grafting. Now, if you have plant A and plant B, let's say you wanted to grow plant A, you would take a bit of the stem of plant A, the parent plant, and then you cut a little, you cut into the um, plant B, and we call this the root stock. It's already growing, so growing root and a growing stem, and you kind of slot them together. So the plant, the you know, the cutting you've taken from plant A can grow and it'll be genetically identical to the plant you cut it from. The rootstock, however, is genetically different. And that's the, I mean, you can read them in the book, they're easy. The one you're going to be questioned on is the harder one, tissue culture. Why we use tissue culture is because it can be used on huge numbers. Grafting and cuttings can't really. So, tissue culture. Now, the example we're looking at is called micropropagation. And many household plants are produced in this way, notably orchids. So, a small 
piece of tissue is taken from the plant to be cloned usually from the shoot tip or the root tips that's where you know the meristematic tissue is those are the cells that can divide and this is called an explant just remember that as it you know a bit is taken from it, it used to be a full plant so it's an explant the explant is placed on nutrient growth medium and is sterilized just to get rid of any bad bacteria you don't want them growing and it forms a cell called a callus. This is because the cells in the tissue divide but don't differentiate. So you get a callus. After a few weeks, single cells from the callus can be removed. This is subdivided. And then are placed on the medium with hormones to encourage shoot growth. So you get the shoot growing first. After a further few weeks, you take the shoots and transfer them onto a different growth medium containing hormones which encourage root growth because the root growths are once you get roots you need to be able to put them in you know soil basically and then these growing plants are transferred to a greenhouse to be acclimatized and grown further before they are planted outside pretty simple there basically take a bit from a take some cells from a plant grow them sterilize them they will differentiate to form a callus which is undifferentiated cells you divide them into different parts put them on a nutrient medium with shoot growing hormones then on one with a root growing hormones and then transfer to a greenhouse so again advantages and disadvantages advantages of artificial clones and with in agriculture you get desirable genetic characteristics again so if you want high fruit production you're going it's always going to be passed on to the clones now this doesn't always happen when plants reproduce sexually Plants can be re reproduced in any season because tissue cultures is carried indoors. Sterile plants can be produced if you don't want them replicating for some reason, you can do that. And plants that take a long time to produce seeds can reproduce quickly. This is relatively quick as you see a few weeks and you've got new plants growing. Disadvantages, like you can get desirable characteristics, you can get undesirable characteristics. Let's say you wanted to grow a load of plants because they produced really ripe, big fruit. But they also had this thing which made them very susceptible to a certain disease. Well, that's going to be passed on as well. Again, lack of genetic variation, as we have said. And also, production costs are quite high due to the energy used and the training of skilled workers. And that is that then. That's cloning. So, you have, we have six ways of cloning. As one I didn't put on, but that's asexual reproduction. But you have splitting of embryos in animals, nuclear transfer. Those are artificial. In plants, you have vegetative propagation, natural, cuttings, grafting, and tissue culture, and that's artificial again. So, thank you for watching. As usual, leave comments, email me, like, subscribe, rate, whatever. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.